Last time on this Let's Play of Mask of the Betrayer, we found an incriminating letter on a guy in the Shadow Plane talking about Shelvadar Num being a, a spy. Normally, you know, being lawful, we should really turn him in. Um, however, doing that apparently causes problems for Kaelin, and I want Kaelin to be happy because essentially buttering up all my companions is the purpose of this playthrough. And uh, her companion bonus gives me a wisdom bonus, which I kind of need. And more or less you accuse him of it. And you have some options. You can say that you'll tear up the letter if he gives you 5,000 gold, and that gives you influence with Gan. I'm not too worried about influence with Gan, though. And so, well, I don't know why he's been a friend to me, but, um, you know, hey. It shifts my alignment three points towards Chaotic, and uh, Kalen likes it. And I really don't care, because I'm still plenty lawful. It also gives three more points towards good. It, just so you're aware, there are ways, depending on your choices in this campaign, where you can gain abilities which will permanently modify your alignment. Uh, just, you know, to, by activating them. And uh, it's kind of weird, but hey, you know. This guy's not going to charge us because we didn't actually break anything this time. We are getting pretty much done with everything we can do in Molson's here at this point. I really tried to, most of the stuff you can do in Chapter 2, I tried to do it in Chapter 1 just so that I can rest and not have problems. Um, chapter 2 starts making the, well, the real game starts in Chapter 2. The, there's one last thing I can do. Um, well, there are two things left, one of which I'm going to hold off on because it, uh, there's an opportunity to gain influence with a companion that I don't have yet, and so I don't want to do it yet. I do want to go visit the Temple of Kelimvor, though, and sort of say hi to folks. Uh, Kaelin was formerly a priest of Kelimvor, so there's something to talk with her about there. She has a couple options in her dialogue I can't do yet because I don't have enough influence with her. But Inside the Temple of Kelimvor, there are basically two people to talk to. Actually, I think there are exactly two people talk to. You said the Acolyte over here, um, who's apparently was, uh, wanted to be a priest of the dead, but was, uh, really more interested in studying necromancy rather than, you know, just being a shepherd of souls. So, you know, you ask him about his necromancy, um, and you can tell him about the false and the, and the faithless, which we'll get to in a second. Um, and more or less, the, the way it works in the Forgotten Realms, well, I guess, yeah, I guess it's specific to this setting, uh, is that if you don't follow a god, you uh, get essentially punished for it. Um, if you follow anything, you're okay. It's just, you know, faith or not faith, even if it's faith in, you know, god of, you know, murdering babies is okay. This is a slightly different uh, ethic than you know, most real-world religions. But anyways, uh, Kaelin has her little crusade, more or less, if, if you took, look at some of her other conversation options, we'll actually talk about this in a second, uh, she more or less says, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't agree with that. And so we're going to say we'll put a stop to it and we'll gain a little bit of influence with Kaelin. And, uh, you know, there's a journal entry that's added. Um, and... There's essentially two ways to complete that quest. That, that particular line of dialogue, and you can also go find an item for him. And you, I think you get a, an item reward if you bring him the uh, book he's looking for, but it's not very important. The other person to talk to here is Darovic, who is a priest of Kalimvor. And uh, apparently he knows Kalen. And they trade barbs for a while. Now, Darovic over here is a little more interesting in conversation. Well, and he talks about pretty much the same thing. Uh, Kalen was a, formerly a priest of Kalimvor, and we'll get into that in a second. Um, and so she and Darovic kind of cross swords about things. Uh, specifically, Darovic is challenging that, that Kalen is trying to overturn the established order through violence, which Kaelin says she never intended to be violent, but apparently uh, it's uh, 
how it works. And uh, you can ask Darovic about Kalimvor. There's not a whole lot that we're not going to under- we're not going to hear from Kalen in just a second. He will also tell you that uh, the the high priest was burned in the furnace. We know the high priest has the key to the lower levels of Death's God's vault, so we're going to have to act to that high priest at some point. However, we couldn't do anything more with him at the time, so we're going to need something else. There's a second conversation you can have with Darovic, with Gan in your party. Gan is apparently kind of a militant atheist. Well, he's a spiritualist of sorts, and so he doesn't believe in them. And, you know, more or less he says, hey, I can do miracles too, so you must not... And, uh, you know, they talk, talk, talk. And Darovic says, you are without faith. And Gan says, I don't believe in your gods, but I believe in something. And Gan is going to be punished and that the punishment is unjust. But, um, and, you know, Gan sort of talks about traditional visions of hell. And Darovic talks about the Wall of the Faithless, which, as you, I guess you might be able to imply from what we're talking about, the Wall of the Faithless is kind of important to this game. We'll, uh, we'll actually go see it at some point. It have, take some pictures, you know? Bring home some souvenirs. And you can actually, uh, with lore skill, recognize what he's talking about and get another little conversation. I don't ever actually choose that uh, because it gives you bonus to one companion and a penalty to another. And so you can ask him what he's talking about. And Gan's more or less saying, oh, he's just threatening me. And Darovic says, oh, I'm not threatening you, I'm just telling you what I know. And unfortunately he's right, which is, you know, kind of frustrating, but hey. And Kalen more or less says, you know, it's an abomination. And... So the, the, the way the wall works is essentially you get imprisoned in the wall, and then the wall eats your soul. You know, comfortable, huh? And uh, you can actually gain some influence with Gan if you say there's worse hells to imagine. That was the point of this conversation as far as I'm concerned. Next up, we're going to have a little chat with Kalen, but I'm going to do it out on the world map because, well, the town map, because this area seems to cause frame rate issues for me. This conversation with Kalen really summarizes kind of what this game is about. There's uh, a second part of it, which is kind of important just from a selfish standpoint, but ultimately the campaign hinges on this next conversation. You don't actually make any decisions during the conversation, but this is sort of the the explanation. Yes, how may I help? I am. I find your sense of purpose in this journey grants me strength, and it lightens my spirit. Whatever drives you has driven me as well. I feel there is much I can learn from you, and I thank the planes our paths crossed. I speak the truth. Do such words trouble you? I'm glad my words were able to lend you strength, but you spoke to me for a reason. Gladly. If I have the answer, it is yours. Doom guides are priests of Kelimvor. They comfort the dying and struggle to bring peace to creatures that have been denied death by necromancy or other means. We are intended to bring peace to the dying and to the dead. We teach it is not something to be feared, but simply a natural ending to life. It is difficult to express, but I will try. Once I was one of the priesthood of Kelimvor, god of the dead. I walked the plains, alleviating the suffering of others. But to face those same spirits, to soothe them and comfort them, only to know that they are bound for a place that torments them, it is not something I understand. In Kelimvor's faith, they teach that death is not something to be feared, that it is part of the natural cycle, but that is not true. If one does not worship the gods, there is much to fear and no prospects of peace in the afterlife. To comfort a dying child, 
knowing it is destined to scream eternally in an ever-living wall. A midwife of the plains who has never heard of such a thing as gods. An entire plain of sea wives who farm the sea and seed the oceans to bring about life. To know that they are bound to become stones in the wall of a faithless citadel, crushed together by dogma and ritual that has never once been reflected upon, that never once has been examined for what it is. Yes, the great wall that encircles the City of Judgment. Its bricks are souls that never pledged fealty to any god, nor knew that they had to to achieve paradise in the afterlife. They are mortared there, crushed together to suffer by archaic law. No matter how good or pure or unselfish they were, it matters only if they followed the proper rituals to a deity. Any deity. Religion is not ritual. It is intended to comfort, to strengthen, not to punish. Is lip service to a god, is that what is important? Or is it the acts and belief that matter? Just, you know, as a bit of perspective, this is a big question in Christianity um, because the, uh, the scripture is not too clear on it and there's been some disagreements over it over some of the years and, uh, well, uh, let's just say that if this is a, you know, video game talking about a dilemma, it's a real-life dilemma, well, a real religious dilemma as well. My conscience cannot be silenced on this. I hear justice. I hear the last words of those who suffer and need comfort. All of these things I hear, always. But beyond them, in the fugue plain, I hear the cries of those dead who lie within the wall, and I cannot forsake them. And really the question is, is faith sufficient or are good works what matter? And, you know, depends on who you ask, really, uh, with real-world religions. In this particular setting, it's very clear what matters, and it's faith alone that matters. Um, now, obviously, Kaelin has a problem with that. I am not going to attempt to take a stand on it and uh, get into a philosophical debate in the middle of a Let's Play of a video game, but you realistically could sort of ask yourself that question based on this, which is one of the things that I like about Mask of the Betrayer is that it doesn't, you know, just stick to sort of fluffy stuff. Now, I'm going to say that I'm going to help her out because this is the purpose of this playthrough, as I mentioned earlier. I would welcome your help, and it lends me strength to know that you are my ally in this. I will fly to them, and I will grant them wings as I have. I shall release them from the curse that their death has become, because it is the right thing to do for one spirit to be at peace. I led the Second Crusade to tear down this wall. Like the first, it failed. But I still live. It will continue. My grandfather sought to dissuade me from my efforts with the tale of the First Crusade. I do not think he understood the tale he was telling. Before then, I did not even know that there had been previous attempts to bring down the wall. To realize that others had felt as I did gave me a new strength, new conviction. One mortal sought to cast down the wall and failed, even with an army at his back. His name was Akachi, sometimes known as the Betrayer. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, an important name, and not the last time it will come up either. In all things, Grandfather saw process and order and ritual, and that is what he tried to teach me when he told me of the First Crusade. But those are abstracts that orbit a purpose. If the purpose is flawed, what meaning do process and ritual have? So, more or less, Kaylin is chaotic good. I don't know if that's actually her alignment, but that's the statement she's making here from a you know, classic D&D perspective of helping people is what matters. The, the, the formats and rituals and such do not. This is very much sort of a law versus chaos game, though there's some good versus evil in there as well. He is a Solar, and I one of his descendants. His blood runs through my veins, but my perspective and my spirit are my own, not tied to the higher planes. Only one question remained in my mind, so I spoke it. Why must the universe be so? Grandfather answered, resolved with, what is there to be done? To him it was a statement. To me, it was a question. It is that question that is the torch that leads my way in shadow. I know what must be done. Okay. Well, um, since we're siding with Kaylin for this Let's Play, you, uh, I guess, know 
which way we're going to go on this. Anyway, that was the probably the most, well, one of the most important conversations in the game, and really sets the stage for, it's really more Chapter 3 than Chapter 2, but Chapter 2 we're going to have to deal with on the next episode.